Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the You've Been Webber podcast channel. Uh, this is just a shout out to Kirsty Moore and her family who've been campaigning for, the, for her brother Jason Moore who was sentenced to 18 years for a, a crime, a murder that he didn't commit. He's already spent nine years in there. He's got another nine years to go. Here's a little ITV report. It's only six minutes long. So have a look at it and it sort of places all the evidence that they've got in the case so far. And I'm sure you agree, like me, it's a fucking liberty what they've done. Jason Moore has spent more than a decade behind bars after being found guilty of murdering Robert Darby. The victim was stabbed to death in a park in East London in 2005. But there's growing evidence that the conviction may be a miscarriage of justice. The prosecution rested on what a key witness saw that night, but that witness's evidence has since been discredited. Now, former senior police detectives have joined the calls for the Criminal Cases Review Commission to investigate, as Sam Holder reports. Jason Moore has spent 10 years behind bars. For a murder, his supporters say he didn't commit. Has there ever been any part of you that thought he could have been responsible for this? No. No, never. It's just not in him. There's no violence in Jason. In 2005, Robert Darby was stabbed to death outside a pub in East London. Jason Moore admits he was in a parked car near the scene, but maintains he wasn't involved. There is no CCTV or forensic evidence that links him to the murder. Just the word of one eyewitness. What makes this case stand out is that the victim's family also believe Jason is innocent. Tim is Robert Darby's brother, and he's campaigning for Jason's release. Yeah, it's just totally wrong. You don't, you don't bang a geezer up for something you've never done. Not for the life, anyway. You don't know Jason more, do you? Thought... Never seen him. Never met him. You've got no connection to him? No, no, no. So this isn't about your kind of allegiance to him? No, it? no. It's all about principle. You don't bear gaze up with something you ain't done. The only eyewitness to identify Jason initially picked someone totally different. And then, in a highly unusual step, the police asked him to pick again, seven years later. Experts say the witness might just have remembered seeing Jason's face from the first liner. And now, new evidence has come to light. A local journalist who has been investigating for a podcast spoke with the witness. And this is what he said. It was the pinnacle of the eye. I was passing by. How could you remember the like that? And I was drunk. And you were what? I was drinking alcohol. Dave McKelvey is a former detective chief inspector for the Met Police. He runs a team of retired officers who investigate failings. He's so concerned at the conviction, he's taken on Jason's case for free. How convinced are you that the police got it wrong on this one? Uh, utterly convinced. Yeah, it, it was undoubtedly a miscarriage of justice. The reality of this is really simple. The witness says that the man who carried out the stabbing was five foot nine, I believe, he describes. Jason Moore is six foot five, a big man. You could not miss him. Now, the description given bears no resemblance at all to Jason Moore. So the clothing's wrong, the ID's wrong, and we now know that the witness who gave that evidence was also, had also drunk alcohol that day. So there's real concerns about that ID, and it's only that ID that convicts Jason Moore of this murder. The Criminal Cases Review Commission, or CCRC, is the body that investigates miscarriages of justice. It faced widespread condemnation for its handling of the Andrew Malkinson case. He spent two decades behind bars for rape, even though DNA evidence could have cleared his name. You look at the, the recent Malkinson case, how long it took for him to prove his innocence. And that's the problem with the system. You've got a, a number of people who are convicted New evidence does come to light and the system to get that evidence back in and get before the Court of Appeal uh, is broken. It's not working. And that weighs heavily on Kirsty as she watches her brother spend year after year inside. 
a lot of the public think that uh, the British justice system works um, and they have faith in it. We were just normal people like your viewers. This can happen to anybody. There's no discrimination around the miscarriage of justice. The system is broken. But it's a system they need to work within. Jason has now lodged a new application with the CCRC. And Kirsty has handed in a petition to Downing Street. Joining her, Tim, the family of a convicted murderer and the family of his supposed victim, together fighting to clear his name. Um, so what has the Criminal Cases Review Commission said about all of this, Sam? Well, look, Charlene, we did try and speak to the CCRC, but they said because of this new application, it would be inappropriate to comment on the case. But there is a wider issue here, and that is how long it seems to take uh, for miscarriage of justice allegations to be dealt with. We saw with Andrew Malkinson, it took decades. There is now a public inquiry into that. And do the CCRC really have the capacity and ability to properly investigate allegations? We can't say that Jason Moore is innocent. We don't have proof for that. What we can say is at least there are serious questions about some of the evidence that was used to convict him. And what his supporters say is that if he is potentially innocent, it should be a top priority to try and get him out of jail as quickly as possible. But the process seems to be glacial. And again, what sets this case really apart is the fact that you have the victim's family saying the man currently behind bars is not the one responsible for their loved one's murder. OK, Sam, thanks very much for that. Well, there you go. <laughs> what can you say? I mean, when have you ever heard anything like that? On that basis of that evidence that you've just seen, a man is convicted and sentenced to 18 years in prison. He spent nine years already in there with another nine years to go. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, even to the point... The Robert Darby, the guy who got murdered, his own brother is also campaigning to get Jason Moore out. I mean, what can you say? It, it, it's, it's all there. There's a little position, uh, petition going around uh, that we need you to sign, that Kirsty Moore, Jason's sister, needs you to sign. And it will help on his next appeal. He's got one last chance of an appeal because of new evidence that have come out and that is the evidence that you've seen on the uh on the on the, on the report about the drunken guy and looking at photos i mean I, I, you've seen it it's it's it beggars belief absolutely beggars belief and then and then put yourself in jason's shoes in jason's shoes in jason's family shoes sitting roasting festering in a British prison cell already for nine years with another nine years to go and you're completely innocent. It's a living hell, a living hell. Even if you're guilty and you go into them places, it's a living hell. But just think of the family. That someone's brother and someone's son spending all that time in that wasted life for something he hasn't done, he's innocent. The guy's innocent. I mean, that's how I feel anyway by looking at that report. And it's a fucking travesty. And we cannot let this establishment keep doing this to the working classes. It's a fucking liberty. They're doing it more and more often. So we've got to make a stand. Sign a petition. I don't know if I can put a link on this on this YouTube thing, but if you go to my Facebook uh, page, the petition's all over it. Also, there's a, a free Jason Moore Facebook page. Go to Facebook page, go to his Jason, free Jason Moore Facebook page and have a little look around and have a read about what's going on. You know, Kirsty Moore needs help, his sister. They just need help. So sign the petition, please, and help get an innocent man free from the confines of a stinking British prison cell. Thank you. And power to the people.